Hi, welcome. This is Sadi on Soccer, and I am here with San Diego Soccer's goalkeeper, Boris Pardo. And I first want to open up just saying, hey, Boris, thanks for coming up and joining me this afternoon. I know it's been a busy day for you. You started off your day at, this morning at the YMCA here in Encinitas training. How did the training camp go? Thanks for having me, Greg. Um, yeah, training went well. Uh, my team is just starting, you know, they're, we're starting to mesh and, and, and uh, trying to get in sync with each other's movements and, you know, Little details like that, the right. fine tuning, right. but the practices have been intense. They've they've been they've been ran really well. Um, so yeah, it's just I think I think you're getting that starting you know to get those little that eagerness you know that no that kidding. itch. So yeah, guys want to get out there. They want to play, but also we all know that there's still a little bit of work to do. Great. So Boris, does the San Diego Soccer's have a backup goalie that we haven't seen or heard of much yet? that's going to stand in there if things happen, if you get an injury or whatever. Yeah, there's uh, there's another goalkeeper that, that's in that's in camp right now. His name is uh, Yair, but um, he's he's a local kid from TJ. He's actually really good. He's Great. good. He's very raw, you know, but uh, he's still learning the little the little angles and 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 those, you know, kind of experience tricks um, right. angles. So it's – you know, it's a learning. It's going to be a learning curve for him, but he's he's very quick. He's very agile. Um, you know, his size could help him in that quickness getting inside the side. But you know, he's a, a big thing. Is you know what what the good goalkeepers in the league do? They stay big as as long as possible. Right. So now th that sort of sounds to me like we can expect that Boris Pardo is expected to play every game, every minute, all the way through if everything works out right. Is that right? Uh, it's, uh, that's the coach's call. Um, of course. and I don't, I don't know what they have planned, but I mean, uh, my goal, I, I want to play every game. Okay. So uh, right. the only thing I can do is, is just be ready. Um, I'm always going to be ready to play every game, you know, knock on wood. But, um, if something, you know, happens or if the coach decides to, to rest me and give the other guy experience and right. then that's, it is what it is. Right. So the Pacific division has... We've got, well, the same three goalies that we want to sort of highlight in the division. I don't, I don't really want to take anything from Turlock from the goalie's standpoint, but the team probably isn't up to the rest of the teams in the division. Um, and we've got Danny Waltman and Chris Toth and yourself playing in the, the uh, Stars and the Ontario Fury and the San Diego Soccers. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, this is a pretty powerful lineup. And not, not to take anything away from the goalies around – the league, the uh, you know the Vanzellas and uh, Lemos and these other these other awesome guys. But talk about what we've got here in the Pacific Division. Um, yeah, you have two other solid goalies. Right. Um, a lot of respect to Danny. I mean, you know, I learned a lot from that guy over the years, and and Chris, I learned a lot from him over the last two seasons. So, I right. just, uh, I mean, it's going to be very competitive, and all three of us, and including the goalkeepers from Turlock. Right. Um, we are all competitors. We all are trying to do the best we can to win. And, you know, we're all friends off the field. We all know each other. Of course. And, but when, you know, when, when we get out there on that field, it's, it's can, you, win. can you talk to us a little bit about the new rules? Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, first, was, is that something that's easy to take in? Can you, can you adapt that to your play without any real issues? Like last minute, oh my gosh, I can't do this. Or have you already ingrained, you know, what the rule is? And then how do you feel about them just anyway? You know, you can't talk about what they are and then how you feel about them. Um, I mean, it, the rule, it, I mean, you had goalkeepers coming up, shooting. I, I thought it brought some excitement to So specify to the what this rule is. So a goalie can't go past half field until the fourth quarter, um, but a goalie can launch the ball with a you know, goal kick or goal throw. You can throw it full field. Full field. So, I mean, that that's fun. That, I don't mind that. Right. But um, the one where we can't pass half field, um, I felt like – That's until the fourth quarter? Yeah, until the fourth quarter. Okay. I, I felt like, you know, that they're just trying to speed the game up. They're just trying, you know – force more of the play which i get it and i understand but i don't know I, I i liked going forward but i feel like it's it's just more beneficial to our team that i right. you know that we don't do that um so it just it is what it is i mean i don't play i don't want to go past that field to be honest i mean then i feel like i'm in no man's lane I'm in, <laughs> no, i don't want to run that far to get back so it's a historical fact that um 
uh, Zoltan Toth scored his very first MISL goal on a throw. Okay, he threw the ball and had a little bit of English on it. Mm-hmm. And it spun, maybe it was Hungarian, but it, on it instead of English. But anyway, and it made a little roll into the net. Um, are we going to see any of these? I, I'm going to be looking for it. Nice. You know, in a field like Turlock or in a field, uh, I mean, it's going to be tough in Ontario and, and Tacoma because, I mean, it's just, you know, they're bigger fields. Right, but right. You know, in the smaller fields, you'll, you'll have a chance to do that for sure. How do you feel about the different sizes of the fields around the league? I don't. I don't mind. I mean, I'm glad you know Sonora, but I know Baltimore has a tight field. Right. I heard Utica might have one. I'm not. I'm not sure. Right. Um, but yeah, Turlock's field is is tight. Uh, it it just you have to adapt. So it's it's fun having that change. Right. Um, but it's just adapting as as best as you can. Okay. Um, I think it offers the team, the home team, with the smaller field. A home field advantage beyond the normal home field advantage. Sure. There are people that would argue that both teams are playing on the same field. So how how does one have the advantage? But it's about practicing on that field. Mm-hmm. When you guys go to practice, you're not practicing on a field that's that's set up to the specs for Baltimore and then to the specs of Monterey or to mm-hmm. this. You're playing on your practice field, mm-hmm. and that's the size that your practice field is. So I mean, that's a, another discussion for another time. But that's just an well, interesting. Yeah. It's an interesting thought that we have because we do have such a big variety of of, of field sizes. And the turf is different too. So on some fields, some oh, the, turf, the turf is different. So you know, you, you get a different balance. You, um, you get a different cushion on it, a uh, different feel for the ball. So, yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot to a take lot into. Variety. Yeah, a lot of variety. So, wow. Yeah, it is an ad- it's advantageous to the, to the home team. Um, so, but I think in this, in this division, everybody's already used to it. Good. I think we're all aware of it. It's just when you have to cross, play a different division or right. go over to the East Coast or right. where, where have you, that's where you come into trouble. And so that speaks to the uh, single elimination format in the playoffs just emphasizes that home field advantage so huge at the end of the season whoever has that better win-loss record is going to host that game so it makes all the games during the season important Mm -hmm. um so how we spoke a little bit about it but how do you how do you uh feel the team's coming together we have had a huge turnover of players Uh, it's like i said the team is there we're meshing well we're figuring that out um I mean, you can tell in in Dallas game, you know, we didn't uh, we didn't fold. We weren't pointing any fingers, you know. Even though guys were, you know, we, we just missed a target a little bit. I just right. feel like that fine tuning, just you know, that's part of the camp. Right. That, that's that's the time where you where you utilize uh, or where you take care of those problems. Um, but I feel you know going into the season, we do have a lot of games in the beginning. Oh no, uh, kidding! I was just gonna, <laughs> I was just going to mention that. So the San Diego Soccer's are the only team that hasn't started play so far. Mm. There's a game tonight, and this weekend there's a total of six. Last weekend there was, I think, ten. Uh, every game, every team played last, last weekend. The Soccers don't play until the 16th. And then you guys have five games in, a, in the span of 13 days. Mm-hmm. Talk about that. Um, yeah, so we open up with RGV at home, and then I believe the next game is in Ontario, right? I yeah. I think it's Ontario two days. Yeah, two days. Fortunately, in that whole group, you don't have any back-to-back, but there's, there's a travel day in there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's a lot of games in in uh, you know short amount of time, but uh, I feel like a trainer, Paul, you know, the coaching staff are going to do a good job managing our bodies, yeah. managing the practices. Um, I honestly, I mean, I I know we have a lot of games, but to be honest, I'm just focused on RGV. I'm right. a home opener, you know, just one game at a time, and then once that game's over, Ontario, and then once that one's over, and then whoever's next. So. I'm, just focusing on RGV, Who's you know, next? studying them, and yep. and that's that's basically where I'm at. Um, and just to mention this, of course, most of you guys probably know that the uh, San Diego Soccer's home opener on the 16th of December will be a memorial honor honor to uh, Coach Ron Newman. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I'm not privy to what the fanfare is going to be or what the uh, the uh, but but there will be a uh, promotional giveaway which I think is kind of cute. It's the Ron Newman Cup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, of course, it's not the Ron Newman Cup. Yeah. It's a it's a soda cup with Ron Newman on it, but I thought that that was kind of a cute little way of going. Um, I want to shift gears here a little bit. We did not have the planned 2018 Arena World Championship that was supposed to happen in Hermosillo. 
the last time that the U.S. National Arena soccer team took the field in an international competition, World Cup slash World Championship, was in Tunisia, and you were there. Mm. And you and, and you and I have spoken about that previously, but. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we can expect that the that the team will get together at the end of this season for the 2019 Australia campaign for mini football. Mm -hmm. um, you are the goalie and the captain of that team, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to us about that a little bit. What do you see? Yeah, Tunisia was Tunisia was a great experience. Uh, we had you know a very close game against Mexico and, and yes, uh, that was that was fun. And to be able to play against um, Tunisia, that was our goal because that that crowd was great. Um, but we, you know, we fell short there. But uh, then the next competition we had was Guatemala. That was to qualify for the Australia. Oh, that, that's right. That's right. World Cup. And then we, um, so we got out. We, I mean, we qualified, um, and uh, we were able to beat Colombia. And and we had a hard game against Guatemala and a tough one um, after that against Mexico. But it, that was good enough to qualify. But yeah, I think um, Coach Coach Bernie, Coach Lillevoy, he's, um, I'm sure he's. He has something brewing right now, and what he wants to do, right. but we haven't heard anything yet. Um, so I think you know, once mid-season or something, he might send a notification out an email um, to let us know what what lies ahead, or we'll just wait till the end of the season when everything's all done. Do you guys feel uh, disadvantaged at all going into that co those competitions against teams that don't typically play on a field with boards? And you're on, you're on, their, you're sort of in on their field. Do you guys feel like you guys can hit the ground running and match up man to man and team for team with uh, the Czech republics and whatnot of the world? I mean, it's it's definitely different. You have the boards. You're defending differently. Your angles, you know, are, are very different. Uh, with the lines, it's it's fun. Um, but yeah, they. It just again, like there's these little differences on on that kind of field, and right. those teams really know how to play it well. Yeah. Russia, Czech, right? Um, there and and all these teams are getting better and better yep. and better. They're they're starting to churn out a lot of players and a lot of great talent. Um, so it, it it actually impressed me a lot seeing that in Tunisia and the other countries, the way yeah. they play and the quality of players. It was very impressive. Yeah, it was. Uh, what do you think about the future of us ever actually seeing the arena game? I mean, it was been since 2015 that we've had a World Cup slash World Championship of our game, our arena game, on on that level of of a stage. Do you see that happening, or do you think that? Do you see that happening? For sure, okay. I see it happening. I I know when we have um, when we have our squad together and and we start playing, we can play with the best of them, and I feel that we we have an edge because you know. We, we have an established league here. Right. Uh, we, we know movements, and, and it's a hybrid of, of um, futsal, and, and you have the boards. So I think when you take the boards away, I still th we still have that movement. Right. You know, so I think, um, I, think I, I definitely do see it in our future. Boris, I just want to uh, ask you if there's anything else you want to add. If there, if there's anything else you want to just add to the conversation. Um, well, you know, just wanted to reach out to the fans, San Diego fans. Um, you know, thank you for embracing me. I know, you know, with the change, everything um, changed with a familiar face. But I'm going to do the best I can to um, for the club, for the team, and um, and try and live up to uh, certain expectations that were. Uh, Ever given to me, but well, you, yeah, you follow a long line of real big names in that goal for the last forty years. I mean, there's been a lot of guys that you're now part of that. I mean, you have been part of that, um, and again, still being that guy that's anchoring our net. And uh, it's a huge honor to have you. I mean, I've I've grown super confident watching you stand in that net, you know. And it's uh, it took a little bit of time. I gotta admit, it took a little bit of time. But, um, no, I, I love seeing the way you play and the way you command the field. I think that's a really huge aspect of the goalie, not just being there fielding the balls as they come in, but but the delivery downfield and, and directing the players as they make their runs for those deliveries as you release the ball. And you've owned that, and you're doing an incredible job. I am more than excited to see this, this uh, season start for the Sockers. Uh, I'll, I'll be seeing you down there. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So this is uh, Study on Soccer with uh, – Boris Pardo, and um, hope you guys enjoyed the conversation. Thanks for joining us, man. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. All right.